Yo, what's up, everybody? Jumping here, and this is gonna be jelly time, where I take a N7 blacklisted gun that I have at level 10, and I show you it in the gameplay. So, today is gonna be something very special, guys. I finally got the Cerberus Harrier to 10. I'm so happy. It's been a long time of me really dreaming and wanting this gun to 10. But I never, ever would get it. And I know a lot of you guys feel the same way. I always get comments about, how do I get the Harrier? What's the best way to get the Harrier? I really want the Harrier. And I feel really sorry for anyone who does not have the Harrier. And, um... It just seems that that's the way it is. It's one of the hardest guns to get in this game. And I feel really sorry for any of you guys out there that does not have this gun. But, it took me forever to level it up. Like, when I got it to level 1, it, it took me a long time to actually even get it to level 1. And when I finally got it to level 1, I was really happy. And then I eventually got it all the way up to level 5 after months of playing with it. I just playing the game trying to get it. Now, once Reckoning came out, for some reason, I got really lucky, and I was able to get it up to level 10. Like, I got it five times since Reckoning has come out, so I've been really happy over that. Because I absolutely love this gun, guys. And this is probably my favorite overall class to play with. Turian Ghost, um, Cerberus Harrier. The thing I love about it is that you can run around and not really use much of any equipment and still perform really well and help your team out a lot and beat it easily like super easy so that's the thing I love now let me go ahead and get into my overall equipment and weapons attachments and everything I'm going to be using in this gameplay so what I'm going to be using I'm going to be using the high velocity barrel I love it because it's like armor piercing 4 but without the damage bonuses that you get and I'm going to be using extended magazines for my equipment I'm using warp rounds 4 Assault Rifle Rayland 3, Warfighter Package, and I don't even know what the armor, I really can't remember what the armor one is. Armor really doesn't matter, the armor uh, equipment doesn't really matter much for the Turian Ghost. You can put on whatever the hell you want, because you don't need Cyclonic, you have the stem packs. Normally I put on a drill in, or I put on maybe Shield Power Cells, maybe Cyclonic, if I'm playing like Platinum, but that's about it. Anyway... But yeah, this gun melts enemies. It's insane. Like, and there's such a difference between level 1 to level 10 with this gun. Most other blacklisted guns, they're pretty solid at level 1. Like, you get it, like the Lancer. Like, my gameplay with the Lancer I did, that was a level 1 Lancer. And it looks amazing at level 1. That's kind of like how these guns are designed, these ultra rares, is that when you get them at level 1, they're pretty good. And they're better than most level 10 guns in the game. But once you get these guns to level 10, some of the guns, they really, really become amazing. Uh, other ones, it's kind of it's kind of more difficult to really tell. But I guess they all become pretty, a lot better. That's just how it works. Guns are better at level 10, we all know that. But anyway, this gun at level 10, it just melts enemies. You melt enemies so fast. And uh, I think the overall DPS it gets increased from like 800 to like 1,000 something. It goes up like 200 or 250 points from level 1 to level 10. So that's awesome. I mean, that, that is really awesome. Now, if you wanted me to go ahead and tell you the best setup, because the setup I'm using is probably not the best setup for this gun. The best setup to this day will always be Armor Person 4, Extended Magazines, and Extended Barrel. That's how you get the most overall damage with the gun. I'm not using it because I don't really want to use an armor piercing 4 for this gameplay slash. I really don't even have any. I think I had one. And I just didn't want to use it because I might need it for like another gameplay video or another... I don't know. I'll probably end up... I, I was pretty confident I'm going to use it for something like maybe the Executioner Pistol or something. So I'd rather not use it for this because this is more of a fun kind of like chillaxed kind of commentary slash gameplay where it's like hey I got the hair you're 10 it's time to be jelly but it's really not intended to be like you know oh I'm better than you <laughs> I have that service hair you're 10 and you don't even have it at level one in your face it's not it's not like that guys the point of these videos these jelly times 
is for me to use some level 10 guns, the, bla the blacklisted ones that a lot of people might not have to 10, and you can watch a gameplay of me use it and kind of like show you the difference, show you like what it does at level 10. And I, and I wanted to make this series a long time ago because I thought, you know, hey, that's a pretty awesome idea. Look at me steal everybody's skills. Oh my god. But anyway, I thought it was an awesome idea. Primarily because it's something that I thought I would want to see. Like, I would be interested in seeing someone who knew what they were doing run around and use uh, a level 10 weapon and show me, like, you know, here it is. Here, this, this gun is great. Look at it at level 10. It's something I always was interested in, so that's the reason why I made the series. And it's not about, like, just, you know, trying to be like a dick. It, it, it ain't like that. But anyway, yeah, so this gun, it, it's amazing. It melts it melts enemies. Um, it's crazy to me, like, a couple things about it. First thing is, is that at level 10, you can shoot a husk one time in the head. One bullet to the head with this gun will kill a husk. Amazing. Another thing as well is that you can pretty consistently kill a brute in one clip. Very consistently. Now, if you're using the other setup, the better setup with Armor Christian 4 and Extended Barrel, you're pretty much guaranteed every single time to kill a brute one clip. When you're using the high velocity and maybe like warp rounds, you have to get a couple headshots and you have to consistently shoot them in their soft spots. If you want some uh, some brute tips, I'll give you some right now. When you're going against a brute, you need to try to aim for their soft spot or their head. Now, if you don't know what the soft spot is, is that they they have a lot of soft spots, but primarily it's like their stomach and their back and things like that, their head. Everything else on them is totally armored to death. So like their arm, for example, if you shoot their arm, it's going to take you a lot longer to kill them than if you just shoot them in the back or you shoot them in the stomach or in the head. So try to keep that in mind. That's where you should primarily aim when you are trying to kill a brute as fast as possible. And with this gun, if you can consistently hit that soft spot or their head, you will kill them even without armor piercing for in one clip. And you'll see me do it consistently in this game. Sometimes I don't, but most of the time I would say I probably do. So, I mean, it's it's just something else, man. It, this gun is so much fun. This is like the way I like to normally play when I'm not trying to record um, a, a gameplay or something for either a build, a weapon, whatever. I actually normally just strap on the Turian Ghost with the Harrier and I just don't really use any good equipment. Either I'll use targeting or I'll use Assault Rifle Rail Lamp 1, Warp Rounds 2 or 3 or whatever I have plenty of. And I just run around and um, play gold or whatever. And I'll play with anyone because I have so much confidence that no matter what we do we're probably still going to beat it because I know that with this setup I can kill most everything pretty quickly. It's, like I said, it's it's overall, it's absolutely amazing. And the Harrier is slowly becoming my favorite gun in this game. Now, if you guys know me, you know that I really like the Claymore, I love the Reader Carbine, and I like the shotguns in general a lot more than I like any other type of weapon class. But the Harrier, as of right now, it's like I've been using it so much that I can honestly say it's my favorite weapon to use right this moment. So... It's awesome, and, and I'm like I said, I'm just really glad I got it to 10. I'm so happy about that, and it's just a lot of fun, that's for sure. It is a lot of fun to play with this gun uh, at level 10. You could just melt enemies with this gun, and you will see me melting these Reapers like it's nothing. And it works against, like, every faction. You will just destroy enemies so quickly. It's unbelievable. Like I said, this gun at level 10 is something else. No question about that. But, that being said, I've been really thinking about this lately. And, believe it or not, as much as I love this Cerberus Harrier 10. And if you guys want to make me jelly. I know that the point of this video is just for me to attempt to try to make you guys jelly. But... If you guys want to make me jelly, all you got to do is tell me that you have a higher Lancer than me. Because my Lancer is only at level 2, and that's a gun I really want to level 10. So if you have the Lancer 3, 4, 5, anything like that, or level 10, I will be super jelly of you. 
because that is a gun I really, really want to get that high level. The main reason why is because I am starting to believe that the Lancer is the best assault rifle in this game. And I can kind of say that with a very straight face. The reason why is because I actually think that the overall DPS is going to be better for the Lancer than the Harrier at level 10. Now it's hard to really like compare the two weapons right now because I have the Harrier at 10 and I have the Lancer at 2. But if you guys were wondering, in my gameplay I did for the Lancer, I mean if you watch that you know that that Lancer was looking fucking mighty good at level 1. That was at level 1. So at level 10 I could just imagine how much better it's actually going to be. Now, the the Harrier on, like pretty much has higher DPS though. And I would believe at level 10 that the, the damage, fire rate, all that will still be a lot better for the Harrier. So the DPS potentially could be better. But when I start thinking about DPS and I compare these two guns, I have to think of it about like what exactly, when does DPS really matter? That's a good question. When you're talking about small enemies like Centaurians and Marauders and Cannibals, Assault Troopers and all that, normally like DPS doesn't really matter too much because if you let's say you're playing with something with uh, overload like I could strap on an Avenger on this Turian Ghost and I would have no trouble at all killing the smaller enemies I just overload the shields and I shoot them and they'll die and they'll die pretty quickly no matter what I do so that's something to keep in mind like most guns even if they have really low DPS can still kill the small enemies really fast and easily and all that so when I start thinking about this I'm thinking more or less about the overall DPS. What I mean is this. The Harrier, when you really kind of like put it against an enemy like a boss and you unload the 36 bullets, in 36 bullets, yeah, its DPS is going to be a lot higher than the Lancer. I think that no matter what you do, I think the DPS will still be higher. But what you have to kind of factor that factor in is that big enemies. Big enemies will, especially like things on Platinum and all that, like the boss levels and the bigger enemies, you're going to have to probably put multiple clips into them. So because of that, you're going to have to reload. Now, normally I would, I would imagine it takes about anywhere from 1 to 1.5 seconds to reload like the Harrier. So when you're thinking about it, with the Lancer, you can just actually, and at level 10, the Lancer is going to have like 100 and something bullets overall in its clip and the ammo regenerates and all that so I would imagine that with the Lancer you can just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and you never have to reload so if you factor that into the overall DPS and like I said I personally think DPS really only matters for the bigger enemies anyway when you factor the fact in that you don't have to reload with the Lancer and you do with the with the Harrier the duration of damage is actually a lot longer because you're able to probably more than likely I would guess with the Harrier you could probably not the Harrier but with the Lancer you could probably shoot that gun without actually having it overheat for probably anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds and at level 10 I believe it would probably be anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds so and with the Harrier and here's the thing when I compare that to the Harrier the Harrier can probably only shoot for about three to four seconds before it actually has to reload. So I really do believe that the Lancer is probably the best assault rifle in this game now. It has so much going for it. I absolutely love the Lancer. And if you guys want to make me jelly, just tell me that you have a higher level Lancer than me because I want that gun now so bad. I want that gun more than any other gun in this game. And it's really like the one weapon that came out with the Reckoning DLC that is worth it. Like it is that that weapon is like the Harrier of like the Reckoning DLC. It's no question. It's like the one gun that everybody wants. It's the one gun that everybody knows. It's the gun that is totally worth it and everything like that. That's just the way it is. Anyway, uh, now the other weapons that came out like the suppressor, the suppressor is also really good and I probably might do a gameplay with that to show that off a little bit. And if I was to say anything about that gun, I would say that that gun is literally like the Harrier for pistols. But it has some flaws to it, primarily the clip size and the ammo capacity is terrible on that gun. 
it's it's really really bad and because of that the guns hurting there's, there's no question about that but when you talk about like how fast you can actually sit there and kill a boss or how fast you can actually kill like enemies it's unbelievable the suppressor is amazing the executioner pistol now that's a really weird gun and I've been trying to like do a gameplay with it and I think I probably will end up doing it I've had some really good gameplays with it but I don't know as of lately I've been really like uh, really weird I guess I would say about the recording for this game I used the way I always was with Mass Effect was I would get on like play one or two games and pick one of the game I would record them and I would pick a game and I would just go do the commentary and I would do the commentary one time and then make the video and put it on YouTube. As of now, I've been like a lot different. I've been doing it so much different. I've been like, I even if I have a really good gameplay, a lot of times I'm like, you know what? I could get a better gameplay than that. I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to go get another one. So I'll do that. And the commentary as well, like most of the time, like I'll redo the commentary. I'll, I'll think, uh, I didn't like the commentary because there was too many times in the commentary where I was like, oh yeah, uh, 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 things like that. So I'll redo the commentary. And I think that it, overall, it's definitely annoying to me that I'm like that now. But I mean, it's me doing it. Like, I don't even think you guys care as much. But the way I'm feeling about it in general is that the better, if I can put out better videos, like, and better commentaries and all that, the result will be better. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll reap the reward. A little bit of, a little bit of extra hard work makes, you know, the payoff that much better. Because then, you know, I'll probably get more likes and more views and all that because it's, it's awesome. You know, the video is great. Things like that. So that's the reason why, um, it's been kind of like, a a little bit of delay on some of the videos because like although I could just simply put the executioner pistol on and go play a couple games I'll get a gameplay and the gameplay will be extremely solid or pretty good I would imagine but I just probably might not like the gameplay I'll probably want to just either redo it because my teammates died too much or I died too much or I didn't kill enough enemies or something I don't really know <laughs> like it's all it's all these little things that factor in and then I'll sit there and do a commentary and I'll redo the commentary like two or three times before I feel like it's the best one possible all that kind of stuff so anyway though I do want to say something now I keep getting the, the, the comments about the Talon mercenary and I said in I think my how to remove your rocket launcher from your back video I did say that I will be doing the Talon Mercenary pretty soon here, and I still will be, but here, here's the thing, someone left a comment on that video, and I think most people thumbed, it. well, a lot of people, they actually thumbed it up, so I imagine this is totally, like, legitimate. What it is is that I probably will end up waiting until the, the update, until they actually, I think it's this Tuesday, upcoming Tuesday, they're going to come out with a, an update. Now the way that the new updates work, now, they've you know they've always updated the game every week on a Tuesday. Like they change some things, they patch it. You know, they don't patch it, but they they either buff or they nerf, whatever. But as of lately, they've been doing it or from this point on. They're going to be doing it every two weeks, not every week. So this upcoming Tuesday will be the first official update to the multiplayer since the Reckoning DLC has been out. Now, what people are saying is that apparently they're going to change the Talon Mercenary. I don't know if they're just going to buff the crap out of him, like, you know, make sure that his arrows actually do a lot of damage or something. But from what I read from the comment, it sounds like they might actually just change him, like, overall. Like, they just might change, they might come out with a patch. I mean, I don't even know. And it seems like that would be a good idea for Bioware to come out with a patch to try to fix that guy, because... If they don't, he still is not. He's still not going to be that good, because the biggest problem with the Talon Mercenary is the fact that if you try to play him and you're going to use his uh, bow and arrow or whatever, if you're not host, you can get into this really terrible glitch. It's it's a terrible, terrible glitch where you cannot like move for like 10 seconds, or you can move, but you can't like do anything else. You can't shoot, can't take cover, all this, and it can happen consistently to you 
when you play the Talon Mercenary off host. So, unless they can fix that, and the only way I think they'll be able to fix it is with a patch. Unless they can fix that, then I really won't be able to recommend him. You know, maybe what they're going to do is that they might just totally change his, his powers. Just take away the bow or something. I don't know. Or maybe they, they might just fix it and make the bows work a lot different. It's just something we have to look out for. So, for sure, I'm probably going to wait to do him. Just because I want to see what they're going to do. I can't sit here and make a video and say, you know, oh, this is this is uh, the way I think you should play with him. And then, like, three days later, all of a sudden, he's a totally different person now. He's, like, a totally, he has different powers or something. Like I said, I just don't know what exactly what they're going to do to him. So if you guys have any information about this, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell us, like, what you've heard about what they might do to the talent mercenary. Because something needs to be done, that's for sure. Um, his minds are really good. But I would rather, okay, here's the thing, I would rather him not even have the mines at all and be able to actually, like, use the bow and work well doing that. Because that's really the purpose of him. He's not supposed to be, like, a, a mind spammer. That's what he is now. He's basically, if anyone tries to play with him, all you can do, really, is sit there and just spam mines over and over again. That's it. So, unless, uh, I, and, but, but that's not the way he was intended to be played. And that was not the way he was uh, designed. He was designed to be like a, an archer or something. Like a futuristic crossbow using archer. So, and that sounds like a cool concept, but it just didn't pay off. So I'd rather have him be something like that than a, a mind spam. But that might just be me. So, once I get the collector, I'll definitely do him. And I really want the collector. I've been trying my ass off to get it. I've just been buying premium specter packs and uh, reserve packs and specter packs right here. I'm gonna get grabbed. Ah! It's whatever. That stupid banshee snuck on up on me so fucking hard it was ridiculous. Anyway, guys, um, but this is gonna be the extraction wave. Like I said, I hope that I hope they do do something with the Talon mercenary. I think that they're probably going to maybe change him a little bit. At least I hope. Fix that stupid glitch or something because it, something has to be done. And I will be doing the collector whenever I get them. I'm trying to get them. So just cross your fingers and hope I can get them. And if you guys have them, guess what? I'm jelly of you. So if that's the case, leave a comment. Rub it in my face. And I will be jelly. But anyway, guys. Um, right now, when it comes down to doing the gameplays, I will continue. But I, I am doing the Citadel DLC. So definitely go check that out. Because my let's play for that is going to be pretty epic. And I'm going to be focusing a lot of my time on that for now because I'm really loving the Citadel DLC. And I recommend it to any of you guys out there. If you're hardcore Mass Effect fans, I think it's totally worth it. It's the last DLC. You owe it to the franchise. Although I know the end was terrible and you might have, that might have killed it for you for story mode. But believe me, Citadel DLC is, I personally think, worth it. It's a lot of fun epic great story funny as hell gameplay's pretty good all that so and it really gives you some extra closure which is something that is so needed for mass effect 3 anyway guys as you can tell this game's wrapping up i hope i have made you jelly i love the service harrier 10 it melts enemies and it's so amazing I absolutely think it's my new favorite weapon as of right now, but I do think that the Lancer 10 might actually be better, so keep that in mind. I really hope you have enjoyed this. Please like this video for me. I appreciate it and favorite it, and uh, like always, guys, have a very nice day.